Uh, we've got uh, our guests in the studio just about on this uh, Thursday night. Fashionably just on time was one of our guests, very fashionably attired as well, as is the other guy. This is a programme with a difference uh, this Thursday evening, Talking Sheffield, here on Sheffield Live TV with yours truly, Alan Biggs. I'm not quite sure what is going to happen over the course of the next uh, hour or so, except we are going to talk about football and we're going to talk about music as well, because this... What? If, in, in case anybody doesn't know, is the Reverend. Good evening. Good evening. Good oh, evening. Yeah. Spoken like a Reverend as well. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not a man of the cloth. My mummy's qualified to marry people. Is she? She retired some years ago and decided she wanted to marry people, so she qualified. She only did two weddings quit right. subsequently but I was going to say you're going to say she did two weddings and a funeral there for a minute no do you want to have her at your funeral she's far too jolly to be at a funeral really yeah. she's more of a wedding type of, yeah. type of girl the reverend of course of reverend and the makers the uh, the Sheffield well would you describe yourself as pop I've seen this described as indie rock I've seen you described as dance rock electronica and all sorts of stuff and me being too old to know the difference you know what, what? everything really <laughs> yeah I guess as new as the latest album which comes out in October is incredibly different to anything we've ever done right. certainly not dance music so and it's 10 years since you formed it is I'm a veteran been going a while uh, yeah. seems to be going well at the moment though new material we've released uh, last week is getting a great response at radio and stuff, so good. Long may it continue. Good, excellent. Uh, the reason he's here, apart from that, of course, he's, he's a, a big Sheffield Wednesday fan. He's big in more ways than one, as you can see. As is the guy, eight, eight takes something to outstrip. This is James Shield, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Sheffield United correspondent of the Sheffield Star. We needed somebody here to take yes, you on. So I'm yeah. have a bit of balance, <laughs> he's a big guy. But you are six foot six? Six six, yeah. Six six. You are I'm six three. It's very six, often. Three, it's yeah. not very often, sorry, I should it's say. A, that. I feel a little like bit a, like a, a little bit intimidated. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, a middleweight against the heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I reckon it's That's a bit, a bit corny, isn't it? Yeah, it's alright, I don't mind that. Right. I'll be I'm just chuffed before. you call me a middleweight. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're not a lightweight. We'll come on to lightweight and Sheffield Wednesday's performance last night. Uh, we'll talk about that. This is a programme with a difference, as you may have noticed. We normally have a cup of tea on the table, but courtesy of John McClure here, we've got a sort of an amber-looking liquid. Uh, what do you reckon, James? Very nice. So the, the tea is... Yeah, uh, the tea's really great. Good, yeah, it's good. We've, we've, the tea's great. Yeah. 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 We've yeah. got yeah. us own beer, actually. We do, do a, a banned beer. We've been doing the yeah. last few years. Yeah, we've brewed it with Thornbridge. We've got some more coming out soon. This is not it. No, I I, I'd, think I'd so. like to think we as is a superior drop, to be honest. Yeah. But should help the programme to go down a bit better. You must have watched some of these shows in secret and thought well, there's a missing ingredient. Yeah, so, it's spice, you. spice things up a little. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. We've got a glass table here, and we'll yeah. see what's going on. <laughs> so, uh, big Wednesday night. How long does that go back? Is that from childhood? Kid? Yeah. I grew up, uh, lived at Stannington and Grenaside. Uh, Season ticket older from around the age of 10. First started going late 80s, I guess. And then we got season tickets early 90s. Seen some great players over the years. Yeah. I go try and go to away matches. I went to Ipswich last week. That's a supporter. You went to Ipswich. That's a supporter. Like an idiot, way. decided to drive as well. Like I've learned to drive last year. We've had a baby, me and my wife. And I thought, oh, I'll drive, yeah, to Ipswich. Never again. <laughs> Never again. Yeah, we've but, had that, haven't we, James? I've seen too, on many the road to, <laughs> too many times. Too many times. I've ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you must have. You've seen the good. Yeah, you saw. You saw the first home game against Bristol City. Mm -hmm. You saw the very good again against Mansfield. Yeah, yeah. You saw the not bad at Ipswich. And last night, how would you describe it? Oh, awful. Just like upsetting because a week ago against Mansfield, I thought this is it. We've never seen. I heard. I, you know, walking away from that game, I heard old men saying things like. I've not seen Wednesday play like that for 20 years, and I'm, me and Chris, my brother, I go with my brother Chris, and we're just looking at each other like, oh, this is this is proper. And then last couple of games, it's all, you know, gone wrong. I don't know what. And more worryingly than that is the performance of some of the players, particularly people like Matthias, who his body language is that he's not bothered, and he's, he's he seems a little bit like reluctant to get back and defend, and it's a bit. A bit worrying. I'm, I'm sure that's not the case. I mean, what you've got here, here is a lot of foreign players getting used to English football mm -hmm. at the same time. James, you cover Sheffield United, and we'll talk in detail about them later. Mm -hmm. From afar, what are, what are your kind of observations on Do that? you know what? The, the little bits I've seen, and I just wonder if last season, obviously, different manager, different mm -hmm. approach, mm -hmm. and it was all about sort of honest endeavour, wasn't it? Organisation. And I, I just wonder if for the new chairman coming in, the new manager, the new players, you've maybe just gone a little bit too far. 
yeah. the, uh, the other way. I've got and to be just honest. lost a bit of that sort of graph. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. And I think we, we, we said whisper it, but last season's Wednesday side would have probably won last night. Mm. Stuart Gray's team was were very organised. Mm. and Carvalho's thoughts were weird, but they just don't, they just don't, don't seem to have answered the, the key problem for me of last season, which was we didn't score enough goals. Mm. And that still seems to be the, the yeah. case. And they are working on it. Uh, I know for a fact they are. Uh, whether they can get somebody in or not, but I think the smart money is on another foreign acquisition. You'd think the fees are unbelievable for players in the Championship, aren't they? Uh, at that level, Andre Gray, nine million. Well, this is one of the problems, isn't it? When you, if you, I mean, obviously crying out probably for a, a good old-fashioned, I wouldn't say English centre half, but a, a centre forward, but a British centre forward, yeah. a British type player. But as we've all seen, I mean, they, they come at a premium, don't they? Yeah, and yeah. you know, with things like too big a premium, salary, ridiculous. cost management, protocol, and all the boring stuff that that nobody likes to talk about. But the other thing as well is, you, you I mean, you've got a Portuguese manager, haven't you? So he's going to go shopping in mm. the market that he he knows best. And I guess you know why why wouldn't he? Having said that, and it's a great point, James. He's made a particular point of saying, and he, this was in his press conference following the Bristol City game, that he wanted to have an English core to his team. A British was the word he used. British heart to his team, mm. and that for me was what was lacking last night. That it was a feeble effort from a lot of arguably talented players that didn't make a team of substance at all. And you looked at the bench, and I just thought, well, you've got Samedo and Lee, two players. English players that know, you know, home players that, that no, Samedo, <laughs> calling him an English player might seem strange, but you know what I mean, as yeah. a, a Portuguese, but he knows the game over here and would have given more steel. But you can't be too despondent yet, surely. No, I'm not too despondent. I think there's an element of settling in and stuff. What I do agree with is that certain teams will just bully you in the Championship. And when we played Ipswich, we just got bullied. They had that lad Murphy up front yeah. and they're just battering rams and a lot of our players especially the ones that have come in from other leagues around Europe seem a little struggling a little bit to get to grips with the physicality of the English game and I think you give them maybe like a couple of months yeah. fine but we're looking to try and progress aren't we and I think yeah. they've got to start doing it sooner rather than later for me. Well, I think it, you get away with a poor performance, a scratchy game, but if it's extremely poor, as that one was, it was. The, I, I don't condone bull, booing. I don't know how you feel, feel, no. feel, feel about that. It doesn't do anybody any good, but it was so shockingly bad, wasn't it? Nobody could quite see that performance coming. So, whereas the mood was perhaps a bit too high, Suddenly it goes a bit too low. And I felt almost reluctant to celebrate when Sugu scored oh. that equaliser. It was like, oh, it's a bit embarrassing, really, because we got played off park. I thought Reading were by far the better side. Mm. Um, and just a little bit embarrassing. And I guess from a Wednesday night's point of view, the fact that this is all kind of coincided with the Blades' return to form. Uh, it's almost like we've gone yeah. like, a week ago, you know, United yeah. had that terrible opening day result. Yeah. And we're all thinking, this is going to be a wonderful season. We're like, Pinging 50 yard passes and playing unbelievably, yeah. and Blades are going to struggle. And they say a week's a, it's a cliche, obviously, but a week's a long time in football, but it, it really is. is true, you know. But th there's some merit in saying, okay, the Blades got that out of their system on the opening day. It showed the manager something straight away, and you were there. Well, and equally, Wednesday have got a performance like that. Hopefully, you won't see the like of that for many a year, let alone this season. Do you know what? And this is going to be the key with the two, because I don't think it. It showed, I mean, yeah, it did show the manager something down at Gillingham, but I think it also reminded the players about something as well. And you'll probably kill me for saying this, but the, the similarities, and I'd, again, between the two sides, because your lads came in at the season, didn't they, on a crest of a wave, everything mm. in the garden's rosy, mm. Wednesday going to win the World mm. Cup, new <laughs> manager, you, you know, all Nearly. of this. And it was, you know, exactly the same thing going on at Bramall Lane with sort of an uber-positive manager, mm. some new players, Billy Sharp coming back. And they conceded so early in that game, it was almost like just popping a balloon. Yeah. And it was like, you know, blimey, that's, that's not meant to happen. And you saw it unravel. But the one thing that's impressed me about that, and this is what some of the players at Hillsborough are going to have to do, because it, it can be a shock, can't it, coming in? You know, they're, they're stepping into the unknown, as it were. But you've got to learn. And the one thing that the United players have done, in fairness since then, is they've learned from that defeat and they've responded to it. I don't think, you know, it, with hindsight, perhaps I was even a little bit harsh on them in the paper because it, it wasn't like last season when they sort of just collapsed at the back 
this was more a case of rather than a team not knowing what it was meant to do, it was more a case of individuals not doing their jobs at, yeah, yeah. at key yeah. moments. And that you can actually put, you know, right a lot, a lot quicker, can't you? So, yeah. you know, it, it well, wasn't quite the catastrophe that perhaps it, it looked. And who knows right. it? It might be their Norwich moment, mightn't it? It seemed, seemed from the outside, didn't that like defence, central defence, were a problem? And he, he's plugged up with his fellow, this yeah. giant Edgar fella. Yeah. Is he, is he, does he look like... He does, to be fair, yeah. actually, yeah. Okay. He, 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 I mean, he's... Do you know what? And I'm probably I'm going to sound a little bit soft here, but he's such a nice nice lad as well. Mm. I'm glad you've mentioned him, because I've got a nice feature with him in the paper okay. tomorrow. Oh. But, so, <laughs> yeah. well done. Yeah. But he's, no, he's, he's one of these guys, you, you, you want to see him do well. You actually, you know, you spend sort of 15 minutes in his company and you think, you know, do you know what? I really hope you make a, make a fist of this. But he's, he's brought a little bit of poise. He's brought some experience. He's obviously somebody who likes to organise. But the one thing, and football, listen, without descending to the realm of cliche, it's not a complicated game, is it? And the one thing United have got this season is round pegs in round holes. They've got centre-halves playing at centre-half. Mm -hmm. They've got centre-forwards playing at centre-forward. And, you know, listen, it's, it's terribly early days, isn't it? I mean, Blackpool could quite easily turn them over at the weekend and then we're, you know, we're, we're sort of all gloom and doom <laughs> yeah. again, isn't it? But, you know, that, that's, that's the one thing. They've seen what the problems are and, you know, to his credit so far, Nigel Adkins, he's actually addressed them. I think, Adkins is, a, them and I think Adkins is a great manager. I sometimes think at lower levels of football, sometimes having an English manager can be very beneficial and that's mm. a little bit of a fear with regards to Wednesdays when... Carbal got appointed. I mean, being perfectly honest, I was like, who's he? Never, who's he? Like, you're not the only one. Me yeah. too. We, our base player got married in Spain and we missed his flights. We had this awful, arduous journey to get to Spain. We had to fly to Portugal to drive to Spain. Everyone's asleep and we're on this, like, in this taxi and that fella's Portuguese. So I'm talking to him, he said, Oh, Sheffield, do you have, um, you have foreign? I'm like, Yeah, we've got a Portuguese manager. Yeah, I said, He's very good. He's very, very good. Don't worry, you'll be fine. I said, yeah, but we're, not, we're a bit worried because we've never heard of him. And he's like, don't worry, he's, he's a very good manager. So I'm hoping that he's going to turn the corner. But I think you've made a very shrewd appointment there with Atkins because I, I think he, at that level, I think he's a, an infinitely better manager than Clough. And do you know what as well? I think he was probably what they needed because without going into, you know, sort of what happened last season, the whys and the wherefores and that, but it was a club. I mean, it was, it was down on its knees mentally. I don't mm. mean sort of physically mm. or in terms of the infrastructure, but, you know, taken a, a couple of real, real blows. Yeah. And the one thing that, I mean, there's very few managers that can probably find the positives in a 4-0 defeat, but, you know, <laughs> I, I, I would stick my mortgage on Nigel Adkins being one of them, and he yeah. did. And it has, it's given, them a, it's given them a lift. You know, there's a couple of new players come in that's, that's freshened things up, and I think just mentally they seem in a, in a good place at the moment as yeah. well. You might not believe me, but I am pleased as well. Like I, I would like a derby. I, you know, I know people always think Wednesday nights are sort of just saying it for effect, but I, I do want United to get promoted. Like we, although I kind of we sort of laugh sometimes with the playoff final things and semi-finals and stuff. It would be great for the city. That last season when we were both in League One together, were one of the best seasons I remember. You know, it's amazing how many personalities, people in football, out of football, quite high profile, all say the same thing. But you go on Twitter and say that, <laughs> put your tin, yeah. tin hat on. I'm, I'm always very wary on Twitter yeah. over like overtly criticising Sheffield United because I think like we've got such a loyal, strong fan base in Sheffield at the moment I like start saying anything massively partisan about United. You got it in there, didn't you? You got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed as well. That's, that's what we try and do, just, yeah. just <laughs> sneak it in. But um, I'm just going to say hello to my cousins, actually. I have got Sheffield United relatives. OK, are they watching? They Definitely. are watching. I think they're watching, yeah. There's, there's Bradley Shaw and his dad, Paul Shaw, son of Graham Shaw. Oh, Graham Shaw, the left yeah. back from way, way back. Yeah. I remember him. Were he an England player like. as well? He's got, like, England well, caps and stuff. He used to run Sportsman Pub. Yeah. Um, they're his family, and they're the, my cousin Deborah married Paul, and they're the only sort of United section. Of, we've got a very large family. We're all Wednesday nights, 50 odd of them. Yeah. And there's their little corner of blades. Got some black sheep there. <laughs> it's all right. We don't. We don't. We, we don't tend black to sheep? argue yeah, about it too much. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was from the Graham Shaw was from the Joe Shaw era. No relation at all. But it was a, a great, and they were a good good team in those days. Yeah. And I just about yeah. remember it, yeah, there you John. Go. So I can there assure you. you. So, a good evening to the uh, the Shaw family. What you were talking about there about the mood swinging from one way to the other with blades and owls. It, both clubs are in a very fragile state from that point of view, the mood 
surrounding them, aren't they? It's brittle. You know, it can, think, it can be up one minute and down the next. There's no happy medium, is there? The dangers, of course, is overspend. You know, you worry about both of these fellas who've come in and taken control of his clubs. They're spending them... You know, I mean, 1.8 million for Brayford is a lot, a lot, especially in League One, is a lot of money. And similarly, Matthias Cole, I think he's two and a half, where he costs, and Jow, and whoever else. And it's a lot of money that's yeah. throwing around. And you just, the worry is, of course, that it doesn't gel and yeah. we sink. And it, you've seen it happen to, to many clubs, Leeds being a notable example. You certainly have. I don't, I th I don't, it's not a bottomless pit, but, you know, you get the feeling, certainly those of us around the club believe that Mr Shansiri is absolutely genuine and very committed and he's there. He definitely wants to see Sheffield Wednesday in the Premier League and is prepared to spend a lot more money to achieve it. Do you believe that as a supporter? I, I, yeah, I have. A, I, have a, I know a fellow who has a box there and, like, I never go in it because, A, he doesn't ask me and, B, I don't want to be in, in them boxes. I want to be with yeah. fans and that. But he, he said he spoke to the Chansiri people and, like, to his assistant and stuff. And he, he were like totally convinced that they were resolute in the determination to get him into the Premiership. You know, the fear I have is that you've got this like hierarchy of people in which Glen Road is in there. And I don't yeah. mean to speak ill of people and single people out, but Glen Road seems to have ruined a lot of clubs. He seems to wherever he's gone, he seems to have like had a lot of a lot of hard times. And I, I just worry that. They're going to sack Carver Hall if he doesn't do well, and we're going to end up with like Glenn Roder as managers will end at season, and that, that's yeah. the, the fear for me. He was never popular when he came in, and yet I seem to recall he had a good spell somewhere as manager. It was in Newcastle. He was quite harshly yeah, West sacked Ham, there. Was he was at West Ham. I don't think you'll be, you'll be that's where he had the, the health problem, yeah. wasn't it, with yeah. the, the benign uh, tumour? And he's been around the game a long, long time, but for whatever reason, and you know, we've all got our opinions. People took a dim view of that, but also I think the jury's very much out on the committee, isn't it? Well, the, the lad who like, came to work for a week for us and then went to, uh, is it Pearson? Is that, is, yeah, yeah. Adam and then Pearson. went to Leeds, and I get he lives in Leeds and maybe he's, he's got links up there and stuff, but it all just seemed a bit odd for, for, to me, like yeah. that he were employed and there were this big kind of fanfare made about this three-man committee and then yeah. He kind of just scuttled out at back door like a week yeah. later. He did, I don't, that didn't seem to board well for me. No, but Carvalho, to me, from talking to him, uh, not only is a very personable guy, a nice guy, and people have warmed to him, but he's a credible figure. You know, he, he talks and you listen and you think, yeah, that makes sense. I, and, do you know what, going back to that committee idea, though, and I'm not saying it's a bad idea, but I always remember Kenny Jacket talking about this. I think it was when Swansea had something similar. Okay. And he said, you know, I think there was far more sort of cooks stirring the broth down there. Mm -hmm. And he said it was impossible to get an answer because, yeah. you know, six would say one thing, five would say something else. He says, by which time the moment's passed, the player's probably gone elsewhere. We end up with someone we, you know, sort of we didn't mind getting him, but weren't really that bothered about him. And I, I might be a bit old fashioned in this, but it, it sounds great and it may well work, but I'm not so sure. I'm not convinced. I'm not so sure democracy works in No, football. I like a dictator. I don't, I don't yeah. want a politburo. I want, a, I want, yeah. a, I want yeah. the guy. You know, I think whenever there's a clear line or authority, you see clubs. Although, yeah. you, you said that, you can go the other way, can't you? You look at Vincent Tam and you look at the Venkis and people like that, who I guess there's a bit more of a direct... Con I think Mr Shansiri is very hands-on. I don't think anything gets done there without him personally approving it. He wants to know what's happening to his money. Yeah. Uh, and he's a quick learner. I think uh, I'm not in favour of the person in the committee, but I stand to be proved uh, wrong on that. Um, do you know that's almost the first half of the show gone? There you go. Can yeah. you believe that? Well, there's, there's a lot more to come because I, I want to talk to you about a performer, uh, being a performer, and the fact that you are watching performers in football and how you relate from what you do to what those players that you watch every week do. And also, whereas you can almost guarantee a performance. When you go and watch your football, you can, oh, well, I think... No pressure well, there. Yeah, you can, well, yeah. Yeah. You've had, you must have had a few bad days in your time, yeah? Yeah, we've had these festivals tend to be the one where you don't have a sound check, so you go up there and there's something like making some horrific noise and you can't yeah. hear yourself and you end up kind of singing a little bit. That off. must be terrifying because you can't do anything about it and you're out front, you know something wrong. Well, it's that my sound man can, he can turn me down, that's the, always yeah. the key, is that if you're singing terribly, just turn <laughs> I it I often down. think that'd be good here sometimes. Um, talk about Shay Adams, As he's got two years on contract, James Shield about that, Jamie Murphy sale, what he thinks about that, James Gregg to round up the whole sporting scene, and I might have finished this by the time you return in five minutes, see you then. <laughs>